So I figured I'd try and do this video after all, it can't be that hard to speak to a camera, right? So when me and Ellen got to Thailand, it was 5 a.m. their time, they're seven hours ahead. Uh, we got to our hotel at five in the morning after traveling for probably about 36 hours since we'd left here, my house. We had delays at the airport by about nine hours because of some flooding, so that sucked. Uh, there was a lot of waiting around and checking the boards and every hour it would be delayed again. So that was a nightmare. But when we got there, of course, we're very tired. I probably got about five or six hours sleep, bearing in mind that I didn't sleep on the plane, I just can't. And uh, the night before we traveled to London airport, didn't sleep at all because I was too excited and it was kind of a big thing for me to go so far away. I used to have agoraphobia. By the time we got to our hotel, I hadn't slept in, you know, two nights. I was very tired. So we went down to the lobby after sort of sleeping for a bit and met a rep. We traveled with Virgin Holidays, so it was a Virgin rep, a, a Thai lady called Pam. And she just offered, you know, some tours and things we could do and any questions we might have. We already had two elephant sanctuaries lined up, which was the the main reason we were going. But there were some bits we wanted to do, so we decided to sign up for the PP Island tour. It was either that or James Bond Island, as they call it. That would have been like canoeing, which would have been cool, but Ellen wanted to do snorkeling, so we opted for the PP Islands. And then the other trip we decided to arrange was uh, to go and see the south of the island, which was like a big Buddha statue and, and all of that, which I'll talk about in a minute. So after we caught up on sleep, I mean, we didn't do much on our first day. We were pretty much by the pool, looking around the hotel a little bit, resting. Felt a lot better on the Tuesday, the second day, which is when we were going to the first elephant sanctuary. First of all though, got to say our hotel is very nice. The one we stayed at, the Patong Merlin Hotel. Patong is a very, very loud, busy, hectic area. Phuket is a very touristy area in general, but we were just a small distance from something called, uh, Damn, Bangla Road, which is where all the nightlife is. You can go and watch people do weird stuff on stage, like with ping pong balls, you know what I'm saying? We didn't do any of that. I'm not a drinker. We didn't go out and do any of the nightlife. I would have been up for it just to see it, just to not drink but watch other people, but Ellen didn't want to go either. But our hotel was really secluded from that. You couldn't hear much of it. I mean, we were next to the Hard Rock Cafe, so you could kind of hear that at night amongst the aircon that we'd have in our room. But yeah, really the nicest hotel I've been at. Lots of palm trees, like it looked really beautiful. The food got boring because we had half board, so every dinner was pretty much the same food. I don't eat a lot of meat, I don't eat pork, and I don't eat most types of meat, so immediately half of that was off for me. I'd say um, in terms of the people at the hotel, a lot of German wearing speedos, uh, French people, a lot of French people, Chinese and Australian, because you've got to think Australia is, you know, that's where they're gonna most likely go instead of traveling all across the world to somewhere like America or the UK. I would recommend if you're gonna go to Patong in Phuket and you wanna stay at a nice hotel, that was a really good hotel. I think it's a four star, but beautiful, really beautiful in there. Where was I? What was I saying? The elephant tour. We got picked up by the Elephant Jungle Sanctuary Phuket. Uh, they send a taxi to the hotel, it was all paid for. It cost about 70 pounds each to do this, which is uh, well, we paid 2,500 bahts, which is their currency, and that included lunch as well. We did an afternoon trip because I'm not a morning person, so they picked us up about 12 o'clock, I believe. Then we picked up some other people and went north of the island for about an hour. Got to the sanctuary. I can't express um, how excited I was because it's the whole reason we were there. Like, I love elephants so much. I love animals in general. As soon as I saw them, I just felt alive, you know? Most of the time, I feel pretty confused about life and what the point is and the hectic lifestyle of being in the West and working all the time, like, what is this all for? But it was all for that moment when I was there. They briefed us, uh, they told us a bit about the elephants and the sanctuary, and uh, it, was, it was set in a nice sort of jungle area we could overlook, and I'll insert some pictures, we could overlook kind of the jungle <laughs> and, and where we'd just sort of traveled up from. And then we uh, fed the elephants. Such an amazing experience. Again, I'll maybe put a couple of clips in here, but the way elephants use their um, trunk, I was gonna say tusks, use their trunk to eat. It's just incredible to watch them. They're such intelligent animals, and it's such a shame if you know about how most of them are exploited or killed for the ivory trade, uh, for circuses, for people to ride them, and. 
Often it comes down to people just not being informed and people are very ignorant. I mean, I don't have a lot of sympathy for these people because when we traveled uh, to do the Buddha tour and all of that, we traveled up the mountains and you could see quite a few elephants just chained kind of roadside with the seat on their back to be ridden. How people can look at that and not see a problem to see the elephants chained up with no space. If you've ever seen an elephant be broken, have its spirit broken, which is what they do to get them to um, behave or kind of do whatever the humans want. It's probably the worst thing I've ever seen on the whole planet. The fact that the most beautiful animals, again in my opinion, all animals are really dolphins and all these other animals that are exploited as well, but elephants, to look at them and to potentially just want to kill them for their tusks is something I'll never understand. But yeah, these elephants seemed happy. I don't know if it's a fully ethical business like it says it is. After we left the sanctuary, I did a bit of research online and they have another branch in Chiang Mai, another sanctuary, and, and again to state the name, Elephant Jungle Sanctuary Phuket. There's quite a few sanctuaries that operate around Thailand now, because I think it's quite popular for tourism and potentially for money, rather than the right reasons. A lady stayed over at the Chiang Mai one, and uh, she was doing like a, a two-day tour. She got away from her camp overnight to see where they kept the elephants, and they were just chained up for, she says, 17 hours without food or drink. I hope that's not the case. I actually messaged the sanctuary. Let's see what they said. Give me a minute. I don't know if it's plausible, their response, really. But you have to wonder when, when the tourists aren't there, are they being well looked after? I fucking hope so, but again, I'm dubious. So I said, hello, where are your elephants kept during the evening and overnight? Hi, the elephants are free to roam the sanctuary and also have a sheltered enclosure if they wish to get out of the rain. I then mentioned the video I'd seen and what their response would be to that. They said, that video is around two years old. That's not that long though, is it two years? Like, oh, that was ages ago. It says, the lady that filmed it was informed that we were having to do it at the time due to a perimeter issue, but chose to discredit us. Obviously, I don't know 100% that this lady was true in saying they were left for 17 hours without food or water, but I don't see why she would make that up and if that was the case even if they had some kind of perimeter issue. And I have to say, going to the sanctuary, this video is gonna get longer than I wanted it to. Going to the sanctuary, I, I did wonder like, these elephants could just probably break out of the holding enclosures. There's just a bit of word, I've seen elephants, uh, I've, I've read about elephants breaking down metal fences before. They're so strong, unless they wanted to be there, which often an animal's inqui inquisitive and wants to look around or maybe does want to get away. In, in the wild, they would walk for miles at a time. You have to wonder, are they kept there? Are they chained? But again, I'll never know. But if that was the case, someone should have been there feeding them and watering them <laughs> like a plant. There are probably other sanctuaries though where you don't bathe with the elephants and they are just left and you look from a distance. It would be less kind of hands-on, less personal, I suppose, for the tourist like me who wants to meet an elephant, but probably better for the elephants. You should probably go to one of those sanctuaries and I'll, I'll, I'll put some notes in the description of ones that you can look at if you're gonna go to Thailand. I have to say, all the tourists that were there with us seemed uh, respectful of the elephants, seemed in awe like I was, and quite peaceful and tranquil, not Oh, take a selfie with me. The elephants seem really well fed. When we bathed them and, and gave them a like, little mud spa treatment, it was all in good jest. All of the staff there seemed really fun, really funny. They were pouring mud all over themselves and telling good jokes. The food was really good as well. We, we prepared a little meal. I, no one was, I'm always in a position where they ask for a volunteer, like, hey, can I get one volunteer? And no one says anything. So I end up just going, all right, I'll do it. So I prepared a little meal and then we ate from a buffet and it was really good food. Probably the best meal I had there, to be honest, because our hotel food kind of, you know, average. So that was that. Took lots of pictures, I assume. I've just put them in throughout when I've been talking. The elephants, man, I, I just want to go back there now. Um, dream come true for me. But when we left off, I wasn't too depressed because I knew I was doing it again on the Friday. But in between then, we did the PP Islands tour. I, I guess I'd seen pictures of the PP Islands, I'd heard of them. We went by a speedboat, it took about probably again an hour from, well, it probably took us an hour to get to the speedboat and then about an hour to get to the PP Islands. We were there with a lot of people. There was this American group that were a bit obnoxious. At least one of them was. Uh, she, she was kind of funny and endearing in a way, 
But she was like, oh my god, where am I gonna sit? All these fucking people are everywhere. I'm like, oh my god. She's proper Californian. Like, she's from LA. At one point, I said, because I, I injured my foot, I, I uh, stepped on a sea urchin and I got spikes in my foot. They're still there now, by the way. So I didn't do snorkeling. I, I fucked that for myself. And I said to her, because she'd been out longer, I said, do you see much? Was it good? Do you see many fishes? She said, it's okay, but it's no Hawaii. I've been to Hawaii. And like, she wasn't even joking. Like, this was just her privileged lifestyle. Like, for me, going to Thailand was a massive deal. I don't often have that kind of money to go. And while I could, if I saved more sensibly, I got the impression this was just another trip for her. But anyway, moving on. The Pee Pee Islands, you go to two, there, there are two islands. One is called Pee Pee Lei, L-E-I, I think, and, and Pee Pee Down or Don. D-O-N, I think. Can't remember which was which, but one you can get off and, and look around. I was surprised they actually had a hotel there. They had a load of bars and like you could get massages. There were quite a lot of people. And these tours are very popular. So unfortunately that does ruin it a bit. There's a lot of boats there, a lot of interaction and um, rather than, you know, if you watch one of these islands in a film, scattered with people. We also, we didn't get off, but we went to the Monkey Island where literally, as it sounds like, you have monkeys roaming the island. There were some people off there, they wouldn't let us off because they said that the monkeys had been attacking people. I would have loved to have got off just, you know, for the hashtag Insta selfies. I could see people doing that, but really, the reason is probably they don't want to get sued or get an insurance claim if someone gets their fucking face scratched to pieces. So we kind of, we boated past there and then we went to Bamboo Island, which was a beach. Most beautiful beach I've ever seen. I mean, is it as good as Great Yarmouth Beach in Norfolk? Hmm. But no, honestly, the uh, perfect white sand, the very clear blue sea. That was the latter part of the day though, and I have to be honest, at that point I was pretty tired. Like, it had been an exciting day, but we'd been around these people and, and on the speedboat at high speed. I get drained from that, and so at that point I was like, okay, it's brilliant, been out in the sun all day, I'm starting to get a bit of a headache and then the day was pretty much over. We were at the beach for like an hour. All very well arranged, and uh, I went on TripAdvisor and reviewed all the places I went because I feel like you should give feedback. We're at like 15 minutes with this video. Obviously, I'll do a, a couple of little cuts, but it's getting long, it's getting long. So next up, apart from being by the pool, which we did for a few days, and it was just wonderful to do that, just to have some time to relax, get a tan. Uh, my skin's been peeling a little bit, you can kind of see it's gone a bit patchy, it feels quite dry. The sun was unrelenting there, it was sort of 32 degrees, which when we came back to the UK last week and it was like 4 degrees, it was tough, it was tough. Next place we went on the Friday was the Elephant Retirement Park, because I'd looked at the two before going and I was like, oh they both sound good and I as we're going for elephants, let's just do it twice and let's go to these two. Basically the same setup, learn about the elephants in the sanctuary, you feed them, you can take some pictures, you then do the mud thing and you bath them and then you go. You, ha you have a shower on the side, it's all, all really good, very similar. I thought it was better at first because the elephants weren't being swarmed. Not that they necessarily were with the first tour. At the jungle sanctuary, it was very much about the photographers moving you in for the perfect picture. I think they are just trying to make it good for the tourists, but I think it should be more about the elephants. With the retirement park, there was a sort of respectable distance. They had this elephant that was, I think, 70 or 75 years old, this male with, as you can see, these massive tusks. And we fed it, and again, I'll probably pick a clip in because I know I've got a video for this, with the barrier in between us, which again, I feel was respectable. I don't feel that was because the elephant was gonna attack. I feel like the sanctuary wanted to give distance and they seem to be verging on that, but hey, don't take too many pictures. They had baby elephants at this sanctuary. I think they probably did it at the first one, but they had different camps there, whereas this has six elephants. The babies, man. There's nothing cuter, I don't think, in the whole world than a baby elephant trying to work out how to use its trunk. I was looking out for any signs that the elephants might be mistreated, but they looked very healthy. We prepared their food for them, like sugarcane, cucumber, uh, watermelon, and a shit ton of bananas, they eat a ton. They seem very well cared for. My only concern, again with this one, when we were bathing them, a couple of them started to spray water out of their trunks. Clearly on demand though. One of the babies was in the mud pit, if you want to call it a mud pit. And it was being allowed to do whatever it wanted, it just like, kind of laid there. I don't know if I got any pictures of it, but it was very cute. But I did know they were all kind of acting on demand again, all encircling at a certain point when we did a group photo. And maybe they don't mind. But there's a part of me that thinks, are they 
Are they, you know, hurt behind the scenes when people aren't here so that they are passive? Or maybe I just need to understand more about elephants. Maybe they are quite passive creatures and enjoy the interaction with humans. I have heard, I don't know if this is true, that elephants look at us like we look at little puppy dogs and they think we're cute. If that is true, that fact makes me happy. But is it a fact? That's the question. One of you probably knows and you'll say, no, it's bullshit, mate. <laughs> Even if the elephant sanctuary wasn't as ethical as it promised, I was still there with my heart and intention to, to respect these animals and to kind of just be like, hey, I love you, you're beautiful. And everyone was, all the people paying there. I mean, you could probably go on the elephant rides for a lot cheaper than somewhere like an ethical sanctuary. So all the people there, I got the vibe, they're all in this, like this is a really great experience. I'm doing this for the right reasons. And really, I hope the organizations realize people are there because they want something ethical that they don't necessarily need to do tricks. They, I mean, they don't need to do tricks if that was a trick when they're spraying water and like squirting on people, which is kind of funny, but not necessary. I'd rather know the elephants are just being able to do whatever they want. But yeah, you could still argue it isn't ethical because they're just, their whole day is centered around a, a routine, not a bad routine. I mean, if that was my routine, people feeding me and then bathing me and giving me a mud spa, doesn't sound bad. God, this video is getting long, but if you wanted a long video from me, you got it. If you're still here watching this, Thanks, by the way. What else? So that was that. Again, just such a great experience. I hated walking away and knowing that it was all over. I wasn't gonna see elephants again, although I did later see them chained by the fucking road. And then the other trip we did was on the Sunday and we went to, I think it's the south of the island. So we, we started the day by going to Caron Viewpoint or Kata Viewpoint. You, you basically see three beaches. Here's a picture of that. Very beautiful views. We had a tour guide. It was only me and Ellen, and normally they'd have a taxi full of like 10 people. So it's sort of awkward in a way. Our lady was really nice. Her name was Poo, P-U. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Poo. But she took all the pictures we needed. Uh, like, hey, we have a picture here. Of course, that's what you do when you've got a nice background. Let's remember this forever. But then we went to, I'm just looking at the pictures now, I'll insert them. We went to a uh, coconut farm, just like a little family house really where they live. Traditional Thai people, we got to see where people live and their, their environment. It was really quite nice. They had a man who jumped up a tree and grabbed a coconut. We had uh, some coconut water that we tried there. I had some uh, tamarind, I think it's called, like fruit. Very sour, not very nice. Yeah, we just had a little walk around there. And then we went to the big Buddha statue. Oh, by the way, at the family place, they had a dog. I'll just send the picture of the dog. 20 years old. 20. I don't think I've heard of a dog being that old before. But yeah, we went to the Buddha statue. Most of the people in Thailand are Buddhist. It is a little bit of a religion. We got a lot of talking to by our tour lady. She said it's not a religion in terms of they don't believe in a god, Buddha was never a god, but it did seem very religious and, and their beliefs and stuff, but none of them are really cynical. They just believe that you'll come back as a reincarnation. They see animals as less than humans, which I never like, because I think that sets up humans to do whatever they want when they have a belief like that. Oh, we're above animals, so animals are less than us. I know I'm preachy like a vegan again right now, but that's just something I kept thinking while on this holiday. They had this gold statue. Again, they love the Buddha. Um, me and Ellen bought a slab, because uh, they're still finishing off the, the Buddhist statue. It's like three quid or something, with our names written on, so that will forever be there now, within the Buddha. Then we went to a temple. In the temple, just a load of Buddha statues, really, and a lot of paintings about the Buddha, the story of Buddha, and how the, the little boy went to be a Buddha, I don't know. <laughs> but it was, it was quite nice to look at. I wasn't there for long. If I go to a museum, I'm bored quickly. Unless it was something like World War II Museum or, you know, something where there's a story behind it. If it's just a load of artwork or something I don't really care about, like a Buddhist philosophy, 10 minutes, that's enough. But very nice to look at. We were left there for a bit. We, we went to the little market and I got a watermelon smoothie, which I had throughout the week. I just kept having loads of watermelon. Then we went to a cashew factory, which in honesty was really the tour, I think, trying to sell, like buy cashews, which we did. They probably act on a bit of commission, but yeah, we got to see how they kind of pull the cashews apart. It was fun, I guess. I didn't take a picture of a lady. I felt that would be too invasive. Took a couple of pictures within the 
cashew shop just to show you, you know, what it looked like. And then we went off to uh, like an old, I don't know, was it called, it was called Old Phuket Town, so everywhere looked really traditional. That was about it. That was about it for the holiday though. Highlight was obviously meeting the elephants. So I hope you enjoyed my story about my trip to Thailand. I would really like to go again. If I was to go again, I would go for longer than like eight days because that was not long enough, especially with how long it took to get there and back. I'm gonna save up money to go somewhere else now. I'm not sure where, maybe somewhere in Europe because it's so easy to get to. But yeah, thank you for watching and see ya.